Gwinnett County taxpayers will have to pony up $1.4 million, largely because truck drivers don't pay attention to the signs. Now, the signs warn drivers not to come into downtown Norcross because they'll get stuck on a troubled railroad crossing. And when they do, Fox 5 I team reporter Randy Travis says what can happen next is really frightening. It's hard to believe, so Russ, this is still going on. It's truly a miracle that no one has died in any of these truck train crashes we've covered over the years in Norcross. What's also a miracle, all the others that have actually been avoided. Some police departments spend their time running radar. Norcross PD just watches the tracks. I hate to say it, but it's something we expect every day. Police stopped 498 heavy trucks last year, large trucks that roll through town, ignoring multiple signs that clearly warn their kind of vehicle is not welcome in downtown Norcross. Not welcome for their own good. Do not come back through here. They've had some really bad ones where the truck has gotten stuck actually on the crossing there. The train comes through and smashes right through it. Oh, wow. I don't hate that to happen to me. It happens a lot to heavy trucks at the Holcomb Bridge Road crossing. In 2013, someone posted this video on YouTube showing a car carrier hung up on the Norfolk Southern tracks, a southbound train smashing through its load of used luxury cars. Go back up, back up, back up, back up. In 2016, it happened again. A moving truck filled with household belongings bottomed out. Here's what happened next. And just this year, it happened all over again. Another moving truck, another fast train, another disaster. Train came along, you say hop out, hop out, run, run. That's what we did, hopped out and ran. For a city whose roots are tied to the railroad, this heart of Norcross has become no cross. It's a really life risking intersection and it's been all over again and again and again. He owns the moving company involved in this year's crash. Nine families as far away as Washington State waiting for belongings that wound up strewn along Thrasher Street eventually scooped up like garbage and dumped in a warehouse. They're still there while Ron Arviv tries to settle the storage fees. It's a nightmare to think about it. Uh, very hard for a family to lose everything they had. So how are these truck drivers getting themselves into so much trouble? We counted at least 30 no truck signs leading into town, including several right here at the railroad crossing. But truckers consistently say they were focused not on the signs, but on their GPS following directions that would take them to the most dangerous spot in Norcross. This is MapQuest, man. You told me to come a mile and two, two tenths. Mm -hmm. And I came a mile and two tenths and I'm right here. Like all the others, he gets a ticket, even if they never cross the tracks. For the ones who do get stuck, they better hope Wayne Epps is working the counter across the street. It's just like watching a big screen TV right out our front window. The BMW automotive sales owner has called Norfolk Southern to stop the train so many times, he's got their contact info laminated nearby, complete with a crossing number. Just this year, 11 days after the most recent accident, another 18-wheeler bottomed out. But Epps warned the railroad in time for crews to push it off the tracks. It's sometimes it's pretty scary because it just, those things explode. He's watched the disaster scenes unfold since the 1970s. Government leaders always promising to come up with an answer. They'll put a Band-Aid on it and push it aside, and it takes, a, takes some, you know, catastrophe type thing for them to uh, start on it again. In fact, after the car carrier accident in 2013, this city of Norcross study suggested raising Holcomb Bridge Road so heavy trucks would not bottom out. But the half million dollar price tag was never budgeted. Since then, Norcross has suffered three more crossing accidents. The last one in January happened on a busy Friday night downtown. The flying debris damaging 16 cars parked nearby. But every accident they have, they're putting just more sign on it. And it's not, it's, it's not helping, you know, it's not helping. It's not that they're not working, it's just that people just aren't reading them. Government planners are finally getting serious, though, because they say they finally got the money. Now the project will cost $1.4 million in SPLOS funds to pretty much do what the 2014 study recommended, level off the slope leading up to the crossing. We expect to complete construction by next summer. 
So we're talking another 18 months before this is fixed. Uh, that's right. I think at the longest, uh, we may be able to beat that uh, uh, by a little bit. That means 18 more months of relying on 30 signs and a city police department. Did the officer explain to you why you've been pulled over? To keep the start of the next disaster from driving straight through town. Did you see the signs at all? No, nah, I was uh, following my GPS. I, I was just trying to get to my, my next delivery. So for now, you'll just sit here and watch and yeah, just pray and call it in. Well, the city of Norcross is responsible for $266,000 of that $1.4 million price tag. The rest will come from Gwinnett County. And Russ and Sine, you know, the truck drivers say they missed the first set of signs, but they see the second set of signs. But by that point, it's too late. There's no there's nowhere to turn around. There's no way to, you know, make a U-turn there. But the police are saying, give me a break. If you, if you see that you're in this area, this danger zone, call 911. We'll get out there and we'll turn you around and get you back out of town instead of going forward into, you know, perhaps disaster mode there. Yeah, definitely before you get to the crossing. So mm -hmm. question in a year and a half, once they've completed the new crossing, will the trucks still be allowed to come into Norcross or at that point, will they be allowed to come in? No, I've been told they're going to continue to keep the ban in place because there's other areas that are difficult for trucks to move in. So think about this. We're going to spend $1.4 million to fix a crossing for trucks when they're not supposed to go there anyway. They're going to spend this money just in case they miss those signs and then get across the tracks. This way they won't get stuck. Well, if history is a guide, they're going to come anyway. Yeah, because so they're probably, looking at that GPS, Russ. Decent investment. There they're not go. using their eyes. They're watching a phone. <laughs> yes, it's not the sign's fault. Right. Randy, thanks very much. Thanks, okay. Randy.